Hello everyone, Jeff here with an example of performing simulations using cumulative probabilities, random numbers, as well as the VLOOKUP function of Excel. In this example, we have a call center and we've recorded the number of new calls per minute for the last 600 minutes, and those are recorded in the orange table here. So in other words, during 60 of the 600 minutes we observed, there were no new callers. During 90 of the 600 minutes we observed, there was one caller, and so on. What we need to do here for a simulation is create a table of probabilities for our VLOOKUP function to look into to create the simulated numbers. And first we have to find these probabilities, which we do in the normal way. Uh, here we have 60 out of 600 total. So what we're going to be doing is taking the frequency here and dividing by the total. We will put dollar signs in there so that cell doesn't drift. 0.1 or 10% the probabil probability there. And we can just drag that function there. So we have 15% chance that there's one caller, 15% uh, chance that there's two, 40% chance that there's three, and 20% chance that there is four. To make the probability ranges, we can, there's a number of ways you can do it, but one is to first find the cumulative probability. You want to think of accumulating probability, which just means add up the probabilities as they go along. Uh, this is the first one, so it, uh, if there's 0.1, then 0.1 has accumulated. But from that point on, we find the cumulative probability by taking what we have so far and adding the new row. So if this was 0.1 and this is 0.5, we've now gotten up to 0.25, and we can drag that formula down. You'll see if we had 0.25, we added another 1.5 to get 0.4, then we added another 0.4 to get 0.8, and we added another 0.2 to get 1. If you have done this correctly, the cumulative probability will add up to 1. All the probability adds up to 1. Then just to make sure our ranges are correct, we start with 0, and then we just copy the number that the previous row ended on, which will be here. And we can drag that down. So what we're going to be doing is asking Excel to generate a random number between 0 and 1. And we have created a table here saying, all right, let's say that number is 0.7. Look in this table and find where 0.7 falls, which is here and then tell me how many new calls that is. It's three. Now this row here is just copied over here because the VLOOKUP function uh, works best with cells that are all next to each other, so we just copied it over there. So we need a range from zero to one so that random numbers pulled randomly from zero to one will fall somewhere in a range and tell us the number of new calls. All right. So instead of using the random function immediately, I've put some random numbers here. And the first thing it is saying here is your call center can handle three calls per minute. Simulate 10 minutes using the random numbers given. Okay, this is where the VLOOKUP function comes in. Our number of new calls, we are going to look something up. VLOOKUP, open parentheses. It's asking lookup value. Lookup value means what number am I looking for in the table? And you are looking for, in this case, 0.8743. It'll always be the value in this cell immediately to the left. Comma, table array means the table of data with the range and the number that we're supposed to be looking for. And that is contained here. It's the probability table plus the number of new calls, the information that you want Excel to spit out, essentially. So this range here. Column index number means which number do you want me to report? The first one, the second row, or the third row. We want to report the third row back here, so we will put a 3 there. 
So what this has done is this function has said, take a look at the number to the left, 0.8743. Then look at this information, find 0.8743 in the ranges here. It would fall here between 0.8 and 1, and then spit out the number in the third column of that table, which is the 4. So we've simulated here a minute where we have four new calls. We can, as if we uh, had put the dollar signs in the correct places to make sure that our cells don't drift, copy that formula down, and it will do that same thing here. This says take a look at the number to the left, 0.5602, find where that falls in the range, 0.5602 would fall between 0.4 and 0.8, and report back whatever's over here, the 3. And we have done that for a number of random numbers over here. All right, so we're going to be able to handle three calls per minute. So one thing we're going to want to keep track of is how many total callers we have. In the first case, if there are four new calls, and this is the first thing we've simulated, there are going to be four calls. We are able to handle three calls per minute, but we aren't going to handle three calls per minute if there are fewer than three calls. So if we had two calls in that minute, the number of calls we would complete would be two, because there are only two. We don't have three to complete. So the number we're going to be completing here is the smaller of three and the number of callers we have. In this case, we have four callers and we can handle three, and so we're going to complete three. That is going to leave one waiting for minus three. We can then, going down to the second one here, we have one call waiting and then three new ones. So our total number of callers is going to be whatever is here, the one waiting, plus the number of new ones, four. We can drag that down. The number of completed again is going to be the same, I'll type the formula here again, the smaller of three or however many we have, and then that can be dragged down. And again, the number waiting is always going to be whatever is here, the total, minus the number we're able to complete, and we can drag that formula down as well. So, what this shows is a simulation of the number of new calls we might get. In this simulation, we're getting four calls, and then three, and then four, and then three, and then four, and then none, and then one, and then one, and then three, and then zero. We have a total number, which consists of the number of new calls plus the number we have waiting from the previous minutes. And we're able to complete at most three calls per minute. You'll notice, to give another example, uh, in this minute, there's only one total caller, and so we didn't complete three calls, we completed one. And with this simulation, we can perhaps see what's the most number of calls that we'll ever have waiting at once, and in this simulation, it happens to be three. The other instructions here say repeat using your own random numbers. Getting a random number between zero and one is really easy in Excel. It is equals rand. R-A-N-D, open parentheses, close parentheses. You don't put anything in there. And we can drag that down. And you'll notice when we did that, when we changed our random numbers, it looked up all new numbers of calls. Essentially, we've rerun the simulation here. And we can see in this case, we actually have a point at which there are four callers waiting over a two minute period. And uh, one of the interesting and sometimes infuriating things about the random number function is that every time you do something else in the spreadsheet, these will all change. So that can actually make it easy if we just type anything in this cell over here, like a decimal point, and we hit enter. These numbers will all change again, and so it's like a new simulation. That can be handy when you're meaning to do that. And here we have three as the most number of calls waiting. We can do it again. There's four. Now, in this case, we have a really good run. Nobody on hold on that one. Uh, two there. And so what we can do is look at different values. 
and we had a pretty good pretty good run there and that gives us an idea of what may happen over a 10 minute period in this call center.